Today we are talking about why electricity may be AI's biggest problem in more than one way. Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. There has been arguably no bigger conversation in and around AI over the last couple of months than the massive infrastructure build out that is both happening, but is also being preset in these big crazy deals that have the market talking about whether this is all just one big bubble. Now, we've extensively covered the nature of the deals themselves, what are the types of factors that would actually make it a bubble or not. But there is another part of this story which is extremely important, which is whether or not we're actually going to have the physical and energy capacity to even bring all of this infrastructure online. It is increasingly clear that this is a challenge not only in a technical sense, but also in a political sense. The conversation around this took a big leg up in the summer. You might have seen some version of this chart floating around that showed the absolutely static electricity generation capacity of the United States between 1999 and now. China had more than 5 x its electricity generation, giving it one of its biggest advantages when it comes to the AI build-out. In July, investor Chamath Palahapatiya writes, The big problem with this graph is that as AI gets reduced to computation power, it further gets reduced to electricity to power the data centers that house the computation. The U.S. is still ahead in model sophistication and quality, but we are way behind on electricity generation, which could catch up with us. We need to pay close attention to this and make sure we incentivize every form of electricity generation, storage, transmission, and distribution. But before we understand what AI and data centers impact on the electricity system in the U.S. is going to be, we need to ground ourselves in where we are right now. And the TLDR is that about 70% of transmission lines and transformers are over 25 years old, with many installed all the way back in the 1960s and 70s, now nearing their end of life. As the Smart Electric Power Alliance writes, grid reliability has been in decline since the mid-2010s due in part to this aging infrastructure. Now, they also point out that even before we get into the world of AI data center construction, the grid that we have wasn't designed for even our existing modern consumption patterns. Whereas demand grew slowly in the past, we now have sustained around-the-clock high consumption. Electric cars, digitalization, all of these things are driving load growth that was putting pressure on the system even before we got to AI. The Department of Energy currently projects that peak demand could jump by as much as 38% by 2030. And exacerbating that problem, plants that produce 104 gigawatts of power are slated to be retired in that same period. That cuts across coal, gas, and nuclear, and right now only 22 gigawatts of new firm capacity is planned. The DOE predicts that if those plants are retired too quickly without reliable alternatives being brought online, we could see up to 800 hours of blackouts per year by 2030, which could be even more depending on extreme weather patterns. There are also some unique regional strains. Texas's ERCOT broke 10 new peak demand records in 2023 due to both rapid growth and record heat. And other regional centers have even more data infrastructure than the national average. And this is the landscape that the data center build-out is coming into. As per a McKinsey report and Goldman Sachs data, $6.7 trillion of capital expenditure will be deployed in data center infrastructure through 2030. Data centers are anticipated to add somewhere between 116 gigawatts and 243 gigawatts in demand to U.S. grids by 2030. The mid-range estimate is triple the 55 gigawatts that they demanded from 2023. Right now, data centers don't necessarily consume as much power as you might think, given how much discourse they have, but that sort of shift would make a huge difference. Total U.S. power generation in 2023 was around 1,200 gigawatts, so you're potentially going from data centers demanding less than 5% of U.S. capacity all the way up to potentially double digits. Bain, for example, projects that data centers will represent around 9% of electricity consumption by 2030. And one of the big challenges for utility companies with all of this is to figure out how much of this is going to be real. Last week, CNBC published a piece called Utilities Grapple with a Multi-Billion Dollar Question. How much AI data center power demand is real? Willie Phillips, former chair of the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, said, There is a question about whether or not all of these projections, if they're real. There are some regions who have projected huge increases and they have readjusted those back. Grid Unity CEO Brian Fitzsimmons said, we're starting to see similar projects that look exactly to have the same footprint being requested in different regions across the country. Current FERC chairman David Rosner made the point that the difference of a few percentage points in electricity load forecasts can, quote, impact billions of dollars in investment in customer bills. Put simply, he said, we cannot efficiently plan the electric generation and transmission needed to serve new customers if we don't forecast how much energy they will need as accurately as possible. And importantly, This conversation has gone from one for policy wonks and energy infrastructure professionals to one that is starting to hit the mainstream. Just last week, 
USA Today published a piece called Is AI Making My Electric Bill Higher? That piece shared that in a September analysis by J.D. Power, they found that between 2020 and 2025, household utility costs spiked by 41%. Now, according to Bankrate, overall consumer prices are around 24% higher than they were in 2020, meaning that the utility cost spike is outpacing even the rest of what people already consider painful inflation. The Center for American Progress put out a report last month that found that more than 100 gas and electric companies have raised or proposed rate increases for this year or for 2026. In total, U.S. citizens in more than 40 states face higher utility bills going into next year. Now, to their credit, USA Today points out that AI isn't the only thing going on here. That in addition to dealing with this aging infrastructure, we're also dealing with climate-related change issues. But still, it's very clear that AI is on people's minds. Said Todd Snitchler, the president of the Electric Power Supply Association, in the span of, I'll call it 24 months, data centers went from something no one talked about to something everyone's talking about. A Bloomberg expose from the end of September found something similar. The piece was called AI Data Centers Are Sending Power Bills Soaring. They argue that wholesale electricity costs as much as 267% more than it did five years ago in areas near data centers, and that those increases were being passed on to customers. And part of the issue here is simply the way that the business of power generation is designed. As CNN Business points out, large buyers of electricity typically pay lower rates because the distribution infrastructure is less complex. Power needs to be piped to one location rather than hundreds or thousands of homes. Pricing models haven't been updated to take into account the surge in data center growth. Basically, one of the core issues is that there currently isn't really a good mechanism to charge the data centers more because they're the ones adding demand to the grid, meaning that the cost of the build-out, even though it's not something that's being requested by consumers, gets shared and passed on to those consumers. And so when I argue that electricity is potentially AI's biggest problem, it's not just because it's going to be a constraint in the ability to get compute online, but because of the political implications. Robert Reich recently tweeted, A nationwide backlash to AI data centers is brewing, and for good reason. While AI enriches big tech CEOs and props up the stock market, data centers are sucking up communities' water and power. When the AI bubble bursts, the rest of us will be stuck holding the bag. Meanwhile, in seeming proof of horseshoe theory that shows that eventually the far left and the far right come together in the same position, Zero Hedge tweeted, the data centers and AI giants are making billions as they drain the power grid dry and get indirect consumer subsidies in the form of 100% bill increases. Speaking more for the average person, investor and entrepreneur Nick Huber writes, AI is going to go down as a disaster of colossal scale. My electricity bill in Athens, Georgia is up 60% since 2023, six increases in the last 24 months, just approved 20 plus data centers under construction in the region. Quality of life is dropping for 99% of people. And increasingly, this is not just a battle that's happening on social media, but starting to come out into the real world. Pima County, Arizona, recently blocked Amazon's Project Blue Data Center. In that region, residents saw a 14% rate increase this year. And while the local electricity supplier said it had nothing to do with Project Blue, but was rather from an infrastructure investment that had already been made in 2024, AI was the easy scapegoat. Last month in September in Indiana, Google withdrew a proposal for a 468-acre data center project in advance of a planned vote by the Indianapolis City County Council, which was expected to deny their application. In Wisconsin, Microsoft canceled their Project Nova data center plans due to community opposition. In a statement, Microsoft said, Based on the community feedback we heard, we have chosen not to move forward with this site. We remain committed to investing in Southeast Wisconsin and look forward to working with the Village of Caledonia and Racine County leaders to identify a site that aligns with community priorities and our long-term development goals. Earlier this year, Data Center Watch published a report claiming that $64 billion worth of American data center projects had been impacted or were in some way threatened based on community and grassroots opposition. And this was six months before all of these big deals were starting to be announced. So what are the possible answers here? Well, one is that in some cases, tech companies are effectively just building their own power plants. A piece last week in the Wall Street Journal was all about the new tech strategy to bring your own power. The piece reads, most tech titans would be happy to trade their DIY sourcing for the ability to plug into the electric grid, but supply chain snarls and permitting challenges are complicating everything, and the U.S. isn't building transmission infrastructure or power plants fast enough to meet the sudden surge in demand for electricity you're also starting to see bills show up in local legislatures. Last week, More Perfect Union tweeted, In New Jersey, a bill has been introduced to make sure data centers pay for electricity they use. This power surcharge would go towards modernizing the state's electric grid. In August, Oregon passed a similar bill that effectively required data centers to pay for the strain that they put on the grid 
without those costs having to get passed on to the consumer. Said Gartner analyst Bob Johnson, the homeowner shouldn't have to pay for data centers, but that's not built into the pricing structure. Now, this strikes me as something that would be likely to have a lot of bipartisan consensus. To the extent that it is a random arbitrage of the quirks of how the current system works, that individual companies that are meaningfully increasing demand don't actually have to pay for the build-out of that demand without socializing it to others, that seems just like a completely untenable situation that is absolutely doomed to create hostility and animosity. I tend to think, though, that even beyond finding ways to close those loopholes and have companies be more on the hook for the actual cost of the electricity infrastructure build-out, we're likely to see solutions go even farther. Patia again writes, The simple solution for hyperscalers is as follows. Option A, agree to a higher base rate with the utilities so that you can guarantee people in the local geography won't see increased electricity rates. Option B, agree to pay for residential solar and storage for local citizens so they won't see increased electricity rates. Either way, if the hyperscalers don't use their gobs of free cash flow to cushion the inflation of electricity rates, you should expect to see a lot more pushback. I would expand this even farther. One of the things that makes AI unique in the historical patterns of creative destruction is that there is actual creation happening on the front side, not just before the destruction. What I mean by that is that what typically happens when a new technology paradigm comes in is that the first thing that we see is the destruction, the jobs that get displaced and automated away, and the economic fallout that comes from that. In the case of AI, because of the need for this massive infrastructure build-out, the rapid modernization of the entire U.S. electrical grid, plus the construction of new plants both on the electricity and the data center side, there is an absolute boatload of new jobs and new professions to be built simply surrounding that. It seems like an incredible cell phone that the companies who are on the ground doing that build-out are finding ways for this to be the best thing that ever happened to the communities that they're in. I think that right now, those companies and everyone else that flows downstream from them need to be rapidly increasing their attention to and their consideration of the communities that surround and are going to deal with the externalities of that build-out. And frankly, they should not be thinking about it simply as PR and crisis comms, but as an actual chance to be incredibly meaningful and value additive in the short term, even as the AI future that we're all excited about gets built out. To do anything less than that is it just an unconscionable lack of imagination, and I can guarantee will cost more in the long run than just about anything that they could do to engage with communities and get them on board in the short run. Now, obviously, this show is more about the practical than the macro, but I do still want to make sure that you guys have a broad-based understanding of everything that's happening surrounding this industry. Hopefully, this gave you a little bit of a better sense of what's happening in and around electricity in the data center build-out. For now, that's going to do it for the AI Daily Brief. Appreciate you listening or watching, as always. And until next time, peace.